Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to play PSP games on your PC. This is going to be a nice quick and easy tutorial, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing you're going to need to do for today's video is come to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is going to be for the free emulator we're using in today's video called RetroArch. So the first thing you need to do is come here and we're going to be downloading the latest stable build. So I'd recommend just downloading whatever the latest version is when you're currently watching this video. Otherwise, if you have a specific operating system, feel free to download any of the other versions down here. From this point, once RetroArch is installed, you will be met at this menu. What we're going to be doing is coming to the main menu right here on the left. We're going to be clicking out here, either using your controller or mouse, and we're going to be selecting the load core option. And here we will see a list of all currently downloaded cores in our RetroArch. To download and install a new core for our PSP, what we're going to be doing is coming down to the bottom of the list here until we see the download a core option. We're going to be selecting this and here we'll see a list of all available cores that we can download for our RetroArch. What we're going to be doing from this point is scrolling down until we see Sony and we're going to be looking for PlayStation Portable and in brackets PPSSPP. Download and install this core, we simply left click or click A on our controller. Some text will appear at the bottom left to say downloading and once this text disappears your core will be installed. To double check this we can also see on the right here, we can see a hashtag, which means our core is currently downloaded and installed and ready to be used in RetroArch. From this point, we can back out of here by right clicking or pressing B on our controller. We can then come into the load core option one more time. We're going to be selecting the core we just downloaded, which is right here for me, Sony PlayStation Portable PPSSPP. Select this and our core will now be loaded and is ready to be used inside RetroArch. To know this fully worked, we can come down here to the bottom left of RetroArch. We can see PPSSPP is here, which means it's currently loaded and ready to go. Now from this point, we're ready to talk about games and I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download games. Although games are really, really easy to find, a quick Google search will help you out. And when you download your games, they will most likely come in a .7-zip or a .rar format. Now, sadly, in RetroArch, we can't read .7-zip or .rars directly. We will need to extract these files out. And for this, we're going to be needing one of two softwares, either WinRare or 7-zip. Again, I'll be leaving both of these linked in the description down below. In today's video, I'm going to be using 7-zip. However, the process is also very similar for WinRare. Once you have your game file downloaded, right now I have Tekken 6, and you can see it's in a .7z file, which is a .7zip file. To extract this game out, what we need to do is right click, hover over 7zip or WinRare if you're using WinRare, and we're going to be clicking extract files. This pop-up will show up. All you need to do is click OK here on this file, and then your extraction process will begin. Now, depending on how big your game is and depending on your computer, this can take a couple seconds to a couple minutes. So you may have to be patient here while your file extracts out. Now, once your game extracts, if we double click in here, your game will come in a .iso format. So when our game is extracted, we're looking for a .iso so a format file or a disk image file. So once you have your games downloaded and extracted and ready on your computer or ready to come back over to RetroArch, we're going to be coming to the main menu again and we're going to be clicking on the load content option right here. And here we're going to have to locate to where we just extracted our games. Now for me, I have my ISO game right here. Once we've located to your game, you can select it. Now, if you have multiple cores installed that can read ISO formats, you will again have to select your core or you can see I have my current core here that I previously selected, which is the PPSSPP core. So from this point, we can simply just click A or left click for the PPSSPP core. And once we do this, our game will start to load up. Now, one nice thing about RetroArch is it does actually keep the original aspect ratio. So from this point, you can feel free to resize the screen to exactly how you want it and your game will start to load up. And just like that, you'll be playing Playing PSP games on your PC. Now in RetroArch, of course, we will have extra access to menus. So if you would like to access any menu or change any settings, we can come up to the command option here in the top left of our RetroArch window. We have audio options, disk options, save state options, but a little bit further, we will also have a menu toggle, which will open up a full menu dedicated to RetroArch and a couple of things we can do with our core. If we scroll down here a little bit, we will see an options menu where we will get specific settings for our PSP. So feel free to come in here and experiment with any of these settings that you want. Sometimes you need to experiment with these depending on the game you're playing or depending on your PC. So you will need a relatively powerful gaming computer to be able to do this, to run PPSSPP at a good rate. However, for me, I had no issues with this and it ran really well. To go back to our game when you're in the menu, we can go back to our quick menu and we can simply click resume, which is going to start loading up our PSP games again. Now, I would recommend also connecting up an external controller. I won't be showing that in today's video. However, it's really easy to do. And I'll be leaving a link in the description down below to my previous video where I show you how to do this. It'll make your experience a lot better in my opinion and can make games a lot more fun. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play PSP games on your PC. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.